Hey there, Matt Filio in the studio. Uh, today I want to talk to you about an effect you can use in your paintings uh, that will dramatically increase the realism, uh, give it more vibrance and luminosity, and do a couple of nice things for you as well. And that effect is called halation, H-A-L-A-T-I-O-N, uh, halation. And there's an artist by the name of Wayne Tebow not related to Tim Tebow, uh, that used this to great effect. He lived back in the early part of last century. And he did some fantastic paintings that were kind of a bridge between realism and abstraction. Um, but he did paint representationally, meaning that he actually painted what he saw and he tried to make objects look like real things in life. And he's, he used the halation effect to just really empower his paintings and make them very unique. And so what the halation effect is, let me tell you what, I'm gonna actually show you one of Wayne Tebow's paintings and show that to you. So just one moment here. Okay, and so here is Wayne Tebow himself. That's a picture of the artist. And and this is a picture of one, one of his paintings uh, that utilizes the halation effect. And so you can see uh, he has this blue shadow coming from this cake and then a very intense orange next to that blue shadow, which really powerfully transitions into the light background um, around this cake. And you can notice also uh, that the color he selected I'm sure intentionally is complementary to the blue. Uh, orange uh, being a complementary color to blue. And so he uses that in many of his paintings. Uh, you can see that here he uses the halation effect in this one as well. A little bit across the top where he has this bluish band and then he's got kind of an orange uh, line going across. Um, here, I think this is one of his more famous paintings of uh, cupcakes, and he uses that effect here. You can see the orangish ring around the shadow. And so uh, it really can add a lot of interest to your paintings. And I use that in my paintings as well. Um, but especially in this current one I'm working on, let me just show that to you here. And if you've uh, watched some of my videos, you've seen this before. This is um, a close up of my uh, illustration of Acts chapter three, uh, the lame man being raised by Peter in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And what I wanted to do was use the Tebow or the halation effect. I call it the Tebow effect, but it's technically called halation. And you actually take a brighter color, a you know, more intense color, like I showed you uh, with the Wayne Tebow images, um, and you put it up against a darker value. Uh, so if you notice here, I have the shadow uh, being cast by, by Peter, and up against the very light value surrounding it, which would be the illuminated ground being illuminated by the sun, I thought it could add some intensity to this area by using that halation effect <clears throat> on the shadow. So what I did is I took some bright red paint and I'm just gonna show that to you really quick. You can see on my palette here, I take some medium, a little bit of red, and maybe something like a raw sienna, mix the two together and then dilute it so it's not too strong. I'll go and add that, maybe just up in these areas a little bit. And uh, that adds a little bit of visual interest and it can kind of blend that shadow in. You don't want to overdo it, but just enough. And if you overdo it, you can always take some off with your finger. Um, but with that effect, then like I said, um, it adds a lot of luminosity. So that's the first thing the halation effect will do for your paintings. Number one, it will increase the luminosity 
especially in your highlights. I mean, I use that even uh, within the layman, uh, putting some of those brighter colors up against that transition, and that's very important. It's usually put against the transition between a dark value and a light value, a highlight. And I use that within the areas of his clothing, a little bit on his cheeks, which you really can't see in this cropped in version, but you can see it definitely in these areas here, uh, cast by the shadow, you know, or I should say the shadow cast by Peter's foot. And so I use actually some pretty dark red here because I wanted it to be very crisp. But as the shadow gets farther away from him, I use a lighter color and made it a little bit thicker so that it gives the impression that the shadow is blurring because it's farther away from him. Now, obviously, it'll be um, more crisp, more in focus as it gets closer to his body. Um, but I added the very dark little halation effects right in here, and I painted them right on top of the shadow itself. And like I say, it really causes it to merge with the background. So number one, it's going to increase your luminosity, especially in the highlights. It's going to make them pop. And then I kind of segued into this, but number two, what it'll do for your painting is it'll blend the dark values into light values. So it gives us a really nice transition here, especially as we go from this dark shadow um, into this lighter portion of illuminated ground. And then by just using that little bit of a more intense color, and that's the key, you have to make the color more intense and generally that's gonna be warmer in value. Um, so you're gonna use like reds and oranges and things like that, um, browns, and you're gonna use a clear medium to glaze it so that it's not too opaque. And that way it can kind of go over your shadow and over your lighter value and blend the two together. But that's number two, what it'll do for you is blend the dark values into the light values. And then number three um, is it can increase the contrast. And so here the shadow um, didn't have a very defined edge and I wanted to increase that contrast. So I used a very dark reddish color and that then brought a greater contrast to the whole shadow. Um, and that's, that's always good to do where it's applicable, you know, where you're going to have something very much in focus and you want that crisp line, um, where it's needed and that, that'll do that for you. And then number four, lastly, uh, what the halation effect can do for you is it can add visual interest with extra color. Like I showed in the uh, Wayne Tebow, uh, images, we'll just kind of segue back to those really quick. You have this image of uh, Wayne Tebow's over here. And again, notice you have the blue shadow and the very bright orange complementary color. Um, so that adds visual interest. Now, you know, it's quite obvious that this is not photorealism. And having that bright of a um, color against the shadow is more than what we see in nature. So I'm not saying you want to do it to this degree. However, if you do it subtly and you use that effect, um, you're actually mimicking what is seen in nature. It's kind of that prismic effect of light and you can almost see like a rainbow effect here. So that's kind of what we actually see in nature, just not to that extreme. Um, but again, it adds a lot of visual interest. We have complementary colors and they, and they go together so well you know, like peas and carrots together. So it's, it's excellent to have blue and orange, red and green, purple, pu purple, excuse me, and yellow uh, together. And to combine those complementary colors uh, within one painting. And obviously you wouldn't want purple and yellow, red and green and blue and orange all in one painting, uh, probably be very disjointed, but for separate paintings, that would be fantastic. And so, um, that kind of shows you the halation technique. And let me just show you the word and the definition really quick of that. And the definition of halation is here. This is how it's spelled. And it's just called the spreading of light beyond its proper boundaries 
to form a fog around the edges of a bright image in a photograph or on a television screen. And you can utilize that as well in your paintings to give that a fantastic uh, illumination effect. And the other side benefits I mentioned as well. And so here you can see the painting further back and how the halation effect really doesn't get too abstract, but it does add a lot of visual interest, luminosity, uh, increasing the contrast and so forth. Um, so again, use this uh, technique to your own benefit in your paintings. And let me know if you have any questions on this. If you need any help with your paintings, that's what I'm here for. I would love to be a blessing to you and help you in that way. And if you like this video, uh, be sure to hit the like button and give me a thumbs up on that. I'd appreciate that. And uh, that gets it out to more people that can see this and be helped by it. And then also uh, subscribe to this channel to receive more videos just like this, uh, where I give you techniques and tips on how to improve your acrylic paintings. So have a blessed day and we'll talk to you soon.